Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's that time of the month, the time to provide an update on the current state of the GPU market. It's also the time to see whether wearing this new hardware unavailable hoodie is justified in the current market. If you want to grab one of these hoodies or t-shirts and support our independent hardware testing and analysis, links are in the description below with worldwide shipping. In last month's update, we stopped covering the CPU market as we discovered that market is basically back to normal at this point, and that continues to be true in July, so no updates there. The good news from last time was that the GPU market also started to improve, with a notable drop in GPU prices across the board, both for new cards from Nvidia and AMD's current generation lineups, as well as for the majority of used GPUs from prior generations. This price drop was triggered due to a significant downward shift in the price of popular cryptocurrencies and a huge drop in GPU mining profitability. At this point, we're now more than two months on from the record-breaking highest value of coins like Ethereum, with prices less than half of what they were during that peak. This affected GPU pricing in the later part of May and throughout June, and continues to have an effect today. Unfortunately, progress with these sorts of things is slow. Even though mining and cryptocurrencies are on a lengthy downward trend now, it's not like GPU pricing through normal retail channels is suddenly back to normal. Like last month, availability is reasonably good for many cards in a lot of regions around the world, it's just that pricing remains highly inflated over what should be the MSRP for these products. Here in Australia, which tends to be a pretty good guide for a general sort of PC hardware market, last month we were looking at about half of the RTX 3070 GPUs listed at PC case gear being in stock and available, with prices starting around the 1800 Australian dollar mark, way more than double the card's local MSRP. Today, more cards are in stock and pricing has declined by $100 to $150 for this GPU. However, we're still nowhere near the official MSRP of $810 locally. However, there is some progress here, and it's good to see that restocks of these GPUs are not coming in with prices as high as previous shipments, likely due to distributors and AIBs seeing weaker demand at retail at current prices. AMD GPUs like the RX 6700 XT have also seen a small decrease in pricing and somewhat better availability, but to a lesser degree than with the RTX 3070. Speaking to retailers, it sounds that GeForce availability has been a little better lately relative to Radeon, especially at the higher end. Although in regions like Australia, Radeon cards tend to be much more fairly priced, so not as much of a correction is required to get the RX 6700 XT priced where it should be. We are still hearing of several supply chain issues that are slowing any rush of new GPUs from hitting the market. Things like memory modules and other ICs that are critical for building a graphics card continue to face supply constraints, and prices to ship graphics cards from factories to stores also remains much higher than in previous years. Obviously, demand is still very high for GPUs as well, which sees prices inflated due to natural market forces. But even if demand was low, it sounds like these factors would be preventing cards from hitting the optimistic MSRPs set before the supply problems really started heating up. The other contributing factor is still the cryptocurrency market, so let's check in with what is happening there. As of the time we put together this video, Ethereum prices have fallen again compared to this time last month. When we updated you last, Ethereum was sitting at a value of around 2300 US dollars. At the moment, we're looking at a price of around 1800 US, a drop of 22%. Not as amazing as the 34% drop from last month, but a continual decrease in crypto prices is what prospective GPU buyers like to see. As always, it's not just the actual price of the coin that affects the profitability of mining. Overall difficulty as well as gas prices are very important too. Ethereum mining difficulty has been fluctuating a bit over the last month, but month-on-month -month difficulty is down 8%. This means that fewer GPUs are currently mining on the Ethereum network, which is good as it indicates lower demand or interest in mining. However, it also increases the reward to those who remain mining this coin. Meanwhile, gas prices have been pretty flat throughout this month, not a bad thing for those wanting GPU prices to return to normal, but not as good as the huge decrease in gas prices we saw last month. When you combine this with the difficulty decrease and the decrease in Ethereum price, mining profitability continues to decrease slightly, though not to the same extent as in the previous month. A drop is a drop though, and that will have effects on the GPU market. Tracking current generation GPU prices on eBay in the third week of each month for new products and completed sales shows good news across the board. 
GPU prices have fallen steadily again month on month, with scalpers unable to sell their cards for as much as in basically any month stretching back to January or thereabouts this year. These eBay prices effectively show us what people are willing to pay for cards right now, and that's trending down, which should hopefully continue to pull the rest of the market with it. Nvidia GPUs continue to be inflated more than their AMD counterparts on the scalper market, though several GPUs, including the LHR-enabled RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 3070 Ti, are now under double their MSRP, which wasn't the case previously. These cards have fallen in price by 12-19%, to 19%, and due to pricing being linked to mining profitability to some degree, the RTX 3070 Ti through RTX 3060 Ti are all available for roughly the same price as they have similar profitability, which of course wouldn't be the case in a normal market. Meanwhile on the AMD side, the price of the RX 6900 XT has tanked significantly in the past month, falling 24%, the highest of any current generation GPU. This puts its current price much more in line with its performance and mining profitability relative to other GPUs. In prior months, it was certainly inflated. While on average GPUs still cost about double their MSRP, these AMD cards are only inflated by 70% on average. Like in prior months, the RX 6700 XT continues to be the best value current generation card for gamers wanting to purchase a GPU right now. Its value is notably better than others in cost per frame using our latest 1440p benchmarks from Steve, helped by its poor mining performance and consumer preference for RTX GPUs, a nice bonus for people that research value like this. We're actually in a rather odd situation where the GPUs we thought were not amazing value at their MSRP, the 6700 XT and RTX 3070 Ti, are actually among the best value GPUs for gamers on the scalper market right now. On the other hand, it's really not worth buying an NVIDIA GeForce GPU for the most part due to prices that remain inflated above double the MSRP and worse cost per frame value than AMD's GPUs. As prices continue to stabilize and if mining continues to drop in popularity, I'd expect these value equations to stabilize more around gaming performance, not mining performance, where NVIDIA has an advantage when comparing non-LHR limited Ampere to RDNA 2. Prices have fallen in this way due to a general reduction in mining profitability. Using data from what to mine on average, GPU profitability per day is down 13% compared to this time last month, while GPU prices have dropped 16%. This has kept the time to profitability consistent at approximately one year if you bought a GPU right now and if there are no further reductions to profitability. What's kind of funny here is that miners perhaps aren't the most forward-looking with their purchasing habits or are optimistic that mining will either stabilize in profitability or return to a state of increasing profits. While people buying a card today are faced with around a year on average until profitability, those that bought GPUs at prices from last month have seen their time to profitability increase by around 50 days due to a gradual reduction in profitability in addition to a decrease in the resale value of their cards. If these stats are a bit confusing, the basic summary is that buying a GPU for mining right now is looking like a bad investment, but hey, that's good news for those that would rather see cheap GPUs from miners selling their cards on the used market. And of course, the crypto market is volatile, so I could be back again in August with a totally different story in this area. Used GPU prices have also fallen in the past month at a similar rate to current generation cards. Nvidia's GeForce RTX 20 series, for example, has fallen in price by 15% on average, with notably higher declines for cards like the RTX 2080 Ti, which now sits below its $1,000 MSRP. However, people interested in prior generation GPUs at the lower end aren't so lucky, with the RTX 2060 still being very inflated, with an average sale price of $476 compared to its $350 MSRP when it launched two and a half years ago. With that said, the market is looking much better for GTX 16 series cards this month compared to last month. When we checked in for the month of June, reductions in current generation high-end GPU prices due to the drop in cryptocurrency value hadn't yet caused much movement in pricing in the mainstream market segment. But this month, we're starting to see price drops trickle as far down as the GTX 1650, which has now fallen in line with drops in other GPUs. Now, none of these cards are particularly amazing value right now, with all priced well above their launch MSRPs, but lower prices are what we like to see. Then we get to the GeForce 10 series, which has seen a larger than average price drop on the used market. 
At this point, every card with the exception of the GTX 1066GB now sits below its launch MSRP. Bit of a milestone for these old Pascal cards. Again, this is not exactly a great situation in a normal market as most of these GPUs came out in 2016, but lower prices are welcome. For used AMD GPUs, I would strongly advise gamers avoid the Radeon RX 5000 series, as these GPUs are extremely good at mining relative to their gaming performance, which has kept prices inflated much higher than equivalent NVIDIA cards. While prices have declined here as well, a product like the RX 5700 XT is still being sold for nearly twice its $400 launch price on the used market, which makes it exceptionally poor value compared to the RTX 2070 Super, a GPU that is not only faster on average, but also over $100 cheaper. On the flip side, owners of an RX 5700 XT that have no interest in mining do have a nice upgrade path available to them, as we mentioned in last month's update. With the 5700 XT still going for around $760 used, and the RX 6700 XT available for around $730 brand new on eBay, 5700 XT owners can effectively upgrade to the 6700 XT for free, gaining a decent amount of gaming performance in the process. Older Radeon GPUs also remain quite inflated in their price, again due to decent mining performance. Like Nvidia's Pascal line, these older products have dropped the most on average, but for gamers there is not much to like here. For example, the RX 580 8GB is priced 25% higher than the GTX 1060 6GB on the used market, making it poor value. With that said, it is good to see price movement for 4GB GPUs like the RX 574GB, which is looking okay as a $200 stopgap option. So what are the main takeaways from this video? Well, it's largely good news, which is great for the PC hardware ecosystem. GPU prices have continued to fall month on month at a similar rate to what we saw in June, despite a less substantial decrease in cryptocurrency prices and mining profitability. Both new, current generation GPUs and used, older generation GPUs have seen price drops, and we're even now seeing movement in the mainstream end of the market, unlike last month. This is another positive sign for gamers that have been waiting a long time to get their hands on a new GPU, but the continual trend of high pricing is far from over. It's just a step in the right direction on a path that still requires many more steps, as there is no way I would recommend people actually pay current scalper or even retail prices that remain well above their official MSRPs in most regions. Let's hope we see things continue this way, although of course there are no guarantees. A lot of people will be wondering, when will we see prices return to normal levels, which is a constant discussion point across much of 2021. Unfortunately, I don't think two months of price decreases is a substantial enough trend to make those predictions just yet. We'll keep assessing the market and hopefully we see more improvement. With that said, the trends we're seeing this year are giving me a bit of deja vu from when I was making similar updates like this during the previous crypto boom, so we'll see what happens. In any case, you can expect us to continue tracking prices, continue researching what is happening in the market, and we'll be back next month with another update and hopefully more good news to share on the GPU pricing front. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you're interested in supporting the channel, one great way to do that is to get one of these hardware unavailable hoodies or t-shirts with worldwide shipping, and it is available in a variety of colors and sizes. I think it's pretty relevant for what we're still seeing in the market today, and I think it's got a pretty cool design. So check that out, links in the description below. We also have our Patreon and Floatplan accounts in there if you're interested in signing up and getting access to things like our wonderful Discord community. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.